Hi there, my name is Axiom, and in this video we're going to be going over organizing files and media optimization for Foundry VTT. So with version 10 of Foundry coming out, I'm definitely thinking about things I would have done differently at the beginning if I had realized or I'd known that there was some of this information around. There's a lot of hidden little gems on the Foundry website. One of them is this media optimization guide. So let's have a quick look at what they're suggesting. They're suggesting a folder structure like this, an artwork folder. This is going to have images for journals, items, and handouts, an audio folder for your sound files, a tiles folder for your images that are used within scenes, a tokens folder for your actor tokens, and a maps folder for your map backgrounds. So let's expand on this a little bit. Taking into account what they've suggested, I would suggest you build these folders on a per world basis. For my case, that would be for example, which light. I'm definitely gonna have a folder for artwork as they've described. And in my mind, I think that should be broken into under that journals, handouts, items, and miscellaneous. It should be an audio folder and I think there should be music and effects and tiles scene and miscellaneous under tokens I like to go for a PC folder NPC monster and a miscellaneous and under maps I would definitely break it down by chapter or story or by location depending on what I'm running and a miscellaneous folder again under these folders I would put any assets that are specific for one world so anything specific to which light in this case I'm definitely going to be putting in here my gut is that there wouldn't be much in the audio folders and they would probably end up in the next folder I would produce one shared folder that is for between all of the worlds it'll have the same layouts as before but this would be for anything generic that has more chance of being used in other games so for example, once we get to the map section here, you can see I would start breaking it down by location types a bit more like forest, city, underwater, desert, jungle, that kind of thing. So I think this is an expanded way of organizing things based on Foundry's initial ideas. Let's go back to their optimization guide. Other key points they do cover here is actually naming of your files. Try to make sure that there are no spaces in your names of your folders and try and replace them with either dashes or underscores as shown here. This has got more chance of working across multiple multiple types of machines, avoiding unnecessary metadata and names. This makes sense as well. They're talking about stripping out most of this information that's in the name. I don't disagree. I try to personally standardize all of my maps to, to 100 pixel grid size, as that's the default in Foundry. And most maps look good at that level. But I have found that if you have got very large maps, you may have to go down to a 50 pixel grid size. If you do do something like that out of your norm, then I would still maintain some of that information in the name of the file, just to help her remember that you need to scale it differently. Their other key point here is special characters. So yes, what characters are not a good idea to be used within your file names makes complete sense here. The next section is talking about token naming conventions. They're talking about if you have multiple varieties of the one base token. So they're suggesting making sure that you have creature name first and variations of different levels beyond that. So for guards here of different colors, they're saying do guard dash red, guard dash blue, guard dash green. And then if it has anything extra again, dash sword. This is very handy for being able to set up wild cards within Foundry. That's where you can have a token. When you drag it out onto the map, it can randomly select a, a different colored guard each time, for example, or, or a different weapon. Stick with creature name first, and variations after. Their next section in here is talking about art assets. I'll tell you the, what I believe is the correct answer here is WebP. Once you have, figure out a way to convert your files to WebP, whether that's via Photoshop or by a, an online converter or some batch converter, it is well worth doing. The quality that you get and the image sizes being reduced, some very large maps that weren't running very well at all improved dramatically. Once I made that change, Foundry has worked significantly better since I have been making everything in WebP. It is well worth the extra effort. Video assets. If you can get them, WebM files are probably your best bet. At the moment, this doesn't come up too much for me personally. It's usually the right choice for file size and quality for a within new game. Maps. I tend to spend time getting all of my maps to be the same scale. I go for this 100 pixel grid scale most of the time, as I've said before. For very, very large maps, I change to 50 pixels, but that is very rare. I prefer having all of them the same size. I know when I bring them in each time, they will just be there and, and, and aligned correctly at the right size. So I usually spend the time getting the maps 
to that point before I import into Foundry. Audio file formats. Not, I've not been the best with this. I've tended to use MP3s in the past. Their overall recommendation is OGG. Basically, these files are able to loop much better and the quality that you get for the file size is very, very good. Uh, obviously, this does have some problems here, but it sounds like with Safari. But overall, if you can convert things to OGG, it's probably going to be your best option. Another key one within this entire section here is token specific considerations. Size of your token does make a difference. You do see quite a lot of people making them at 200 by 200 pixels but it definitely makes the difference to make sure that they're all 400 pixels by 400 pixels and I also find that when you do actually do show token artwork 400 pixels seems about right the quality doesn't seem too bad at that point again nowadays I spend the time to actually make sure that all of my tokens are WebP now and now we've come to the bottom of that page I think we've covered the basics. Like I said before, I wish I had known some of this when I first started. My first sets of files were a complete mess, but I have been getting better with time. But I hope this helps you all out. Thank you all for listening, and please like and subscribe for more content.